I'm sorry. I feel terrible, and I'm sorry. If you haven't watched Friday's video, go watch Friday's video first, otherwise the beginning of this isn't gonna make a lot of sense. And even when I show you the shot, you will have no clue how I got it. On Friday, I left things as like a total cliffhanger. I built it up like crazy that I was about to show you the impossible shot. And I told you I was gonna show it to you the next day on Saturday. And I started filming that video, but then, then this happened. This happened. This is my daughter, Eleanor May Manning. But we'll call her Ellie. Look how cute she is. <laughs> okay, there's gonna be a whole video on this story and and how it all went down and her and her grand entry into the world, but that'll be later. Uh, today, let's let's focus on all this. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring her back to her mom. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm sorry, but that's a pretty good excuse. <sighs> First off, for today, 55. Hundred subscribers, that's crazy. To all 5,500 of you, thank you. I'm constantly blown away by how cool and supportive this community is. You guys are really rad. All right, today's video is going to be one tip within Premiere Pro that I think you need to know. And it applies to other editing programs as well. I just edit in Premiere Pro, so I'm gonna use Premiere Pro as my example. But if you edit in another software, just take the concept and apply it to your software. And don't ask me in the comments how to do it in your software. I only know Premiere Pro. All right, but before we jump in to the one tip that's gonna change your editing game, I wanna show you the impossible shot. I feel terrible, I really do. And again, I have a good excuse, but here is the shot. It's, it's amazing. And the reason it's amazing isn't because, oh my gosh, it's so, it's so cool or it's so different. Well, it is different. The reason it's different though, is that there's no way that you could get this shot in any other way, at least by yourself. Again, if you haven't seen Friday's video, go watch Friday's video. You'll see how I mounted the camera in order to get this shot, but, but here it is. Is that insane? If you don't think so, and you're just being a total cynic, tell me another way that you could get that shot. And when it comes down to it, at least by yourself, there's no other way to do it. Maybe you could have a drone pilot fly perfectly in front of my motorcycle, or you could drive a pickup truck and have someone hanging out the back of the truck filming like this. But even that, the distances would be weird. This is a perfect shot looking back at the motorcycle, me riding, the world around me, and, and the distance never changes. Wherever the bike goes, the camera goes. And that's crazy. And to those of you saying, well, you could do that with a GoPro, you couldn't because the pole would be in the shot. And when you see the pole, a lot gets taken away from the shot. You know when like you're at the movies and someone walks in front of you and all of a sudden you kind of go, Ugh. like you're shooken out of, of watching the shot. Now all of a sudden you see that you're in a theater, you like remember. The idea with photography and videography should be to limit those moments. You want your audience just immersed in it, just going, wow, how? And uh, yeah, that's what that shot does. That is a crazy shot. That's an impossible shot. All right, now let's edit that shot into the computer. I'm gonna show you my one tip that I think is gonna really change how you edit footage to music. All right, here we are in Premiere Pro. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our audio track and we're gonna drag that to our timeline. What we're mainly gonna be focusing on is adding markers to this track. If you're familiar with adding markers, it's super easy. Just hit the M key. One important thing to note is that if you do not have your track selected, so let's say the track isn't selected like this, I hit the M key. It puts a marker on my timeline. Don't do that. Because if your marker is on your timeline and not on your audio track later, if you end up moving your audio track, now the marker doesn't match up to where you wanted the marker to be. So I'm gonna Command Z both of those. Make sure that your audio track is selected when you hit the M key and it puts a marker 
on your audio track. That way when you pull video clips in like this, it's gonna just go ahead and snap right to that marker. See how it's magnetic? If that's not happening for you, go right here and you're gonna click on this, make sure that snap in timeline is selected. If for some reason the M key does not create a marker on your timeline, go up here to Premiere Pro, click on keyboard shortcuts, go down here to search, say add marker, and right here, make sure that M is selected. You can also check it on the keyboard. Add marker is M. Now the idea is to put a marker where the beat drops. So in order to do that, I'm gonna listen to a song, maybe the first 15, 20 seconds, and I'm listening for that beat that I want my footage to cut on. Did you hear the drop? That drop signifies the beat that I know I want my markers on because I for sure want my footage to cut to the drop. What I see in a lot of tutorials is they'll go in here, they'll zoom in, and visually they'll go here and say, ah, oh, that looks like a beat right there. Hit the M key. Ah, uh, that's, that's a beat, M key. Isn't that, there must be another beat here, M key, M key. Looks like there's a couple here. Just like that. And while that does work, don't do that. Because my tip is to go through the entire song, mark up the entire song before you've done anything else. And if you're doing it like that, it's gonna take you way too long. Here is a way faster way to do it. You're gonna hit spacebar to play the song, and then you're just gonna listen. And as you hear the beat, you're just gonna tap that out with the M key. So this requires a small amount of rhythm, but I believe in you. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go through the entire song, tapping the M key when I hear the beat. And that's it, I now have a marker on every one of those beats throughout the entire song. And there's a few things I can do because I did a little bit of work up front. The first thing I can do is I can count how many beats I want clips to be instead of having to listen every single time. Let's go in here, I'm gonna pull up this A7R2 clip. This is me pulling the motorcycle out of the garage. We'll start it right as I start moving, just hit I. And as soon as I get kinda out of frame, we'll hit O. And I'm gonna grab just the video portion, drag it down to our timeline, fit that to my timeline. And what I can do is I can just say one, two, three, four, I know I want it to cut. I don't even have to listen to the song, I can see where the beat hits. Go to my second clip here. Let's kind of scrub through. That's about where it left on the last clip. Hit I, zoom down a little bit, hit O, grab it down. And I know that I want this to go one, two, three, four. So we'll get a little bit of forward motion on that one. Right here, bike comes back, it starts moving forward. So we'll go to this next clip. Let's make sure this next clip is the bike moving forward. Just a little bit uh, there. And we'll say, oh. All right, that's three clips. Let's get one more clip down here. Same thing, we're gonna go one, two, three, four. And let's grab this last clip. I know I want this to be a four count also. This will be the uh, the garage kind of rolling out. So as soon as I get on the bike, let's start it there. And we'll see where it cuts. Let's make sure it ends there. So this time, instead of dragging it down and putting it here, because I know that I want it to end, I'll say, one, two, three, four. I know I want it to end here. So I'm gonna drag the beginning here and just drag this down. All right, now I have four clips that are perfectly tapped out to my beat and that are all the exact same amount of time. For now, let's just play those four clips and hear how it sounds.
That's perfect. So that's our intro. And you hear after that little intro bit of the song, it gets really fast. The whole thing speeds up. So now instead of using four counts, I'm only gonna use two counts. So it's gonna cut a little faster, which gives the video more energy, a little more, uh, yeah, energy. Let's go back in here. We're gonna pull this Insta 360 footage and let's go from one of these head mounted shots. We'll start with, cause it's kind of goofy looking. We'll just say play. Let's start there. And it's only two counts. We're gonna drag the video down. I know I only want this to be two. One, two, that's it, easy. I'll go a little further in the video. We'll, uh, ooh, a turn, a turn is good, right here. Hit I, play, hit O. Again, it's only two counts, so it's gonna be quick. But we're gonna do two counts on each angle. So two counts there. Let's do two counts from this angle here. Ooh, that's a good shift. Hit I, O. Drag the video down here. Same thing, one, two. Again, I haven't listened to the song at this point. I just know that that's where the music speeds up and I only want each clip to be two counts. Back up here, let's go a little further down the road. Ooh, these trees are cool. That's interesting. Let's start here. Hit play. Hit O. Drag the clip down and trim it just there. All right, so now we have Four four counts, four two counts. Let's add a couple more two counts because we've got the impossible shot. We might do a bunch of two counts on the impossible shot because it's it's impossible. Here's a first, let's go into like something like a turn. That's a cool turn right there. Hit I, hit space bar, and hit O. Grab the video only, drag it down. Same thing, I'm only gonna make that two counts. Go a little further down on the clip. That's another good turn. Maybe go a little further. That's a good turn. Let's go I and O. Drag it down. Two counts. We'll go to a different spot because I was kind of all over the place. Oh yeah, that's cool. This kind of shows off our neighborhood a little bit. I, just a cruising shot. And O, drag that down. And let's do one more shot. That's pretty cool right there. I, space bar. O, drag it down. Grab the end, pull it to it. And just like that, I have a 30 second video that is perfectly mapped out to the beat. Let's watch just that 30 seconds. Sweet, huh? Once the whole track is marked out, it's super easy to just grab footage and click it in place. But yeah, everything just kind of snaps in place and uh, very easy. Another thing you can do with this technique is you can extend your song or track. Like I said, from Epidemic Sound, this song comes in at a whopping two minutes and 40 seconds. But a lot of these videos that I make, a lot of videos that other creators make are 10, 15 minutes long sometimes. So how do you take a two minute 41 second song and transfer that into 10 minutes. There's one way in Adobe Audition where you stretch the song and that works really well, but if you stretch the song first and then you brought it back into Premiere Pro, then you'd have to tap out the beat to a 15 minute song and you don't wanna do that. So here's what you do. Back in Premiere Pro, we're gonna delete all of our footage here and just look at our audio track. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And what we're looking for is two parts in the track that have the same drop. One that's near the beginning of the song, one that's near the end of the song. So we have this big fat chunk in the middle that, uh, that kind of starts and ends the same way. So let's look at that first drop first. Hey. 
And we're gonna go to the end of the song and we're gonna look for a beginning beat that sounds just like the beginning of that drop. Did you hear it? So we went all the way down to the two minute mark and we're looking for that same drop. That's perfect. So we're gonna cut right there. We're gonna go back to the beginning of the song. We're gonna cut right there. And I'm gonna zoom out. Now this whole center piece starts and ends the same way. So I can just copy that center piece of the song over and over and over again until I have the length of track that I need. And to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom way out. I'm gonna move this way down here. This is at the 11 minute mark. Click that guy, hit Command C to copy, and Command V, 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 V. All right, now it's a 23 minute song. And the most important part to listen for is where those two tracks meet each other. So let's go ahead and click in here. We'll zoom in a little bit, and let's listen to how that drop sounds and how smooth that transition sounds. Seamless. You wouldn't have a clue that it's there. You wouldn't have a clue that it happened. And by tapping out the beat ahead of time, I can just kind of look through there and see it and just kind of go clip, clip, rip, stretch it out. Now my entire track that's 20 minutes long all has markers where the beat is. So later when I'm editing footage to it, it all, it all matches up super simple. And that's it. That is your tip for the day. Mark out your entire music track the first thing you do. It's gonna save you a ton of time later. Again, to the 5,500 of you, uh, thank you guys, you rock. If you haven't subscribed yet, do do that. And if you have any other way that you could get that impossible shot, let me know in the comments. I, I'd love to hear it. So far though, she sleeps through anything. Bah! Hey. Early. Nothing, just, just milk drunk.